spark plug I pulled out of there. And you can see that thing is mashed clear down. And Welcome back to the 1975 Dodge. Today, we're going to pull the valve cover off of this jump pile and see just exactly what is going on. In there. Because if you remember from the last video, it's making some noise. So, anyway, come along, let's see what's going on. A little windy, so I hope you can follow along. My plan is to uh, take this valve cover off and see what's going on in there. So, get my trusty bucket here to stand on. And let's get up in here and see what's going on once. This thing, we, we want to try to make it like brand used. So, let me see here. It's like that right there is the right size. That's a 716, so we we'll better just ratchet here because they seem pretty tight. I'd say somebody's had this off. Uh, be my guess. Trying to do something to it. Because if you remember in the last episode, uh, we know that uh, this vehicle came out with electronic ignition. And it has a distributor in it with points. And that's what all these extra wires over here on the side you know, are for because it's been changed back from electronic ignition. So there was probably a problem that developed somewhere. This one here is not even tight. So it probably had a problem that developed somewhere and so somebody decided that they were going to, you know, do something to it whether it was right or wrong, kind of like what we're doing here, I guess. Some might say. Get that up out of the way. Get that over here. Just don't forget to hook all that stuff back up. And there's another one back there. And I'm glad we uh, power washed this a little bit because this thing is filthy. And it's still that way and I've already, we already power washed it, so... That wind is just a not cooperate. Okay, these are all loose. Let's see if we can get these out of here. And I know somebody has messed with this oil filter cap because it uh, it does not look factory. So that tells me, and it's dented right in there, kind of like. Um, See, that thing there is not factory. So, and it's all dented right here, so I think we can, uh, we can probably fix that somehow. This will have to come off. This is what we were fixed the last time, so it would idle. That's that vacuum advance line off the carburetor. Bolt. This will have to come out of there too. Pull that out of the way. That's going to come on. That over there. Just about got them. Another one down here yet. Still another one right there. Now hopefully the valve cover will come off without tearing up the gasket because I don't want to have to purchase a new one. I think I got all the screws out of it. Yeah, I'd say I do. 
Let me go get a gentle persuader and tap that thing a little bit. All right, show you more. All right, I've got my trusty rubber beater here. Oh yeah, she just popped right loose. I think. Right. Let's see if we can get this up off here. I'm glad we did clean this up a little bit though, because I don't want all this junk in the motor. I don't have to put it, have let it go in there. Are we taking bets on what we're going to see when we open this up? You're seeing it before I am, bro. Alright, let's look and see what we got. We know this thing is definitely missing on one of them. Yeah, see, I think we can, I think we can fix that a little bit. That's, boy, that, that thing's nasty on the inside. Good gosh. And there's a chunk of the gasket that didn't make it. So we'll have to get a new one and put on there. All right. Get down in here and see what's going on, Watch. Oh, now we know that these are not hydraulic lifters. That these are manual adjust lifters. They did not use hydraulic lifters on these slant sixes until I think the book told me 88. So it's supposed to be 10 thousands. I mean, that's moving 30 right there, anyway. Just trying to make sure that all the valves... Now, this one... This one's... And this one... Look at that. I'd say that's a problem, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Looky here. It's loose. So that has allowed that to come clear over there, so that's why that's not working. Okay. So that one is really bad. I'm glad we did not try to drive this all the way home. It would have really tore it up worse than what it already is, I think. So, let's see. Is this broke off or is this just loose? No, she's not broke off. I guess that is just loose. Okay. Let me go find out what the torque spec is on that. And then we're going to roll this thing over. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, see, these are way loose. And we're going to roll it over. And, uh, and make sure that all the valves are opening. Man, that's got a big gap in there. Good grief. Okay, all right. Let me go get the torque spec on these. And then uh, I'll, I'll get the distance for this. I think it's 18 and 10, but I'm not sure. Thousands, that is. Um, so I'll have to look. But, um, yeah, we got some issues going on here. It just wore out. Let's make sure that none of these push rods are bent. They all look like they're in good shape yet. So, okay. All right, show you more. Okay, the wind still may be working against us, so I don't know how good you can hear this, but I went and got my torque wrench. I looked up the torque specs, and the torque specs on this uh, rack is uh, 25 foot-pounds. Well, obviously, that one there was back clear out and letting this rocker run clear over to the side, which it still has plenty of slop in it. So, I don't know if there's a spacer missing in here somewhere, you know, I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is, is we're going to tighten this camshaft rocker arm thing back down to 25 foot-pounds, and we're going to go from there. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. And I ain't gotten one of them fancy ones. Boys, this is old school stuff here, so... So, yeah, that was not even close to being tight. There's about 20. I'm going to go 20 on all of them here. That one is tight. That one isn't. Okay, that one was tight. 
tight. That one's tight. That one's tight. That one's tight. Okay, so let's go back in here in the center. Let's tighten this down to 25, which is going to be right about there. On this type of torque wrench, you gotta keep that thing in the center there, so. It may be that that thing is worn out. Let's get this one. Yeah, these outer ones were tight. Twenty-five it is. Alright. That thing is calibrated every six months. Send that baby off. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, it never gets banged around or anything. Let's just put this down here out of the way. Okay. Now, let's see if that thing is. See, it still moves around. These other ones don't move around. Yeah, they do, I guess. They, they move around a little, too. They don't have any anything on them, so... But a while ago, this thing was pushing clear down on the side of it. So, okay. So, what we got to do is get this up where both valves are closed. And the cold setting on these, because it's not been running, so the cold setting is uh, intake is 15 thousandths and the exhaust is 25 and you can tell which one's intake this is intake that's exhaust that's exhaust intake and you can tell that by looking at the intake manifold which ports are coming in on so you can kind of see that let me move you over here and I'll show you I may be oversimplifying it for some of you and undersimplifying it for some for the others this is an exhaust port right here so that lines up with this one so that's an exhaust valve intake intaking fresh air and gas mixture right here and so forth all the way down so you can tell that by looking there so all right now let's get put you back up here and let's get our I used to have some long feeler gauges for this kind of stuff but over the years I've just gotten rid of stuff but now I'm back to fooling with old junk cars so I may have to get some so we're looking for a 15 and a 25 well there's a 15 thousandths right there so that's which one of them that's our intake so 15 thousandths or point three eight oh whatever that is and then this one we need a 25 and we may not have a 25 we might have to put a 10 and a yep there's a 25 right there okay so see we got a 25 thousands right there so that one is for the what oh yes the exhaust valve okay. so let's see once if we can roll this over a little I'm gonna have to get over there to do it I want to get this rolled over so that it's up okay all right, so you can see, hopefully you can see, let me zoom you in a little bit here. So you can see that these are loose now. So, so we're going to take our 15,000, and that is for our intake valve. And we're gonna put that under there, and my, it just there's I could put two or three of them under there, so it's way out of adjustment. 
So we are going to tighten this down a little. Maybe. Okay, so it's just We want it to just drag on there. It's got so much sludge on it that we don't want the valve pushing the valve down or the we just want a little bit of a drag and that's just about right right there. Okay. So now let's check our exhaust. And the exhaust is too tight. I can't even get it in under there, so we're going to have to back that one off a little. There. Okay. So I'm going to go down through there and adjust every one of those just like that. And if I run into something weird, I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, show you more. Okay, we got that valve lash set um, at 15 on the intake and 25 on the exhaust and that's what you're supposed to set that at when the engine's cold. So you're supposed to start it, let it run, and then take them to uh, 10 and 20 I think, yeah. 10 on the intake and 20 on the exhaust. Um, so I want to run it with the valve cover off because I want to ensure that we're getting oil up through these because you're supposed to be putting oil up through here. Um, the oil light goes out on it but that doesn't mean we got oil in the top of the motor as dirty as this is on the inside. The, they could be clogged up so uh, I want to make sure that we got oil coming up. So let me start it and see if it runs any better. down through here and check our uh, our valve clearances or yeah our tappet clearances so now what we want is 10 and uh, 10 and 20 because it was 15 and 25 so now we want 10 instead of 15 There's 13, 12, right there's 10. 
Okay, so there's 10. And this one was 25, so we want 20. That's that one right there. So let's see what we got now. Pick one clues here, right there. Okay, so this is intake, and this is exhaust. So the exhaust is a little loose. Okay. Just want that to kind of slide right through there. Just a look, a little bit of drag. That feels pretty good. And then this one is the intake. Get some of this junk out of there. Yeah, that one's loose. Okay. So, I'll go down through there and adjust all those, and we'll see what happens. All right, let's start this thing up. I got them all adjusted. They were all off just a little, so I really don't know why you do it cold and then hot, but that's what the book says, and so that's what we're gonna do. But So let's start it up and see, because it was still missing. So let's start it up and see if we can figure out which, which cylinder is firing. spark plugs are pretty hot. Them wires are pretty bad because it just shocked me. That was a shocking experience. Simply shocking. Get these put back on there. So we know it ain't them, them three there. Let's try these front three. See what's going on. You know, this spark plug don't even look like it's It don't even look like it's in there all the way. What the? Okay, I I think here's our problem right here. This number one spark plug isn't even screwed in there all the way. All right, let me get my tools and take that out and look at that. I think that's our problem right there. All right, show you more. Okay, so you can see right up in there. This is number two cylinder, and that spark plug sits all the way back. This one. It's hard to see, but this one almost looks like, and, and I know we had that out in the last episode when we set found tip top dead center, but that almost looks like somebody screwed a helical or something in there. So I'm going to back that out and get a little closer look, because um, all I did was screw it back in from when we had it out a while earlier in the, or in the last video. So, But th it is definitely not firing on that cylinder. And it's got uh, juice to the sparkulator wire because it shocked me. So anyway, let's um, let's pull that out of there and see what's going on. All right, show you more. Here's the spark plug I pulled out of there, and you can see that thing is mashed clear down. And if you look in here, it's like what is that screwed into that thing? That's not a helicoil. I don't know if you can see it. That almost looks like a something to hook up water line up with or something. I'm going to try to get that out of there and see what that is because that's not, that ain't supposed to be like that. Alright, show you more. 
Well, looky what was in there. No wonder it was missing. This is definitely um, a part of a um, compression tester. It's not mine. My, my compression, I, I must have screwed my compression tester right into that. That is crazy. All right, so let, now we're going to have to get a spark plug because I tried to straighten this out and broke the corner off. So, um, And you know what? I think there was a spark plug in the glove box, if I'm not mistaken. So, All right, let me find a spark plug, and we'll run this in there, and let's see if it runs on all six cylinders. All right, show you more. Okay, well, I couldn't find an old spark plug, so this one's probably not going to run well. It's hard to get to number one. That's probably why somebody left that piece in there and didn't know it. And that's what's been wrong with this thing running rough the whole time, probably. And it just so happens that my... When I didn't look in there, I just felt with my finger. And when I put my uh, pressure tester in there, why well, I, I just screwed into that adapter that was left in there. So Anyway, so what I did was I took number two spark plug out put it in number one and I'm gonna put this bad one that probably won't I ought to tap that down a little bit it probably won't fire because it's the porcelain's broke but if it does it won't run long probably but I'm gonna stick it in number two because two is easier to get to and then uh, we'll see we'll see once what we can get to see if it'll run it may not may not miss now I mean, it was missing so bad before. Well, obviously. So. Anyway, let's get this put in here. The old girl may run now. I feel like this must have been worked on at an auto mechanics classroom or something. The distributor was in wrong. And And now this, get them pliers up out of there. And let's put the spark plug wire back on there. And let's see, let's see once if it runs any better. All right, we'll give her a start here. Gotta move these tools off here. All this stuff will be falling on the ground. Making a big mess. <sighs> Alright, let's give her a whirl and see what happens. I better move this so that don't fall down in there. Put that back over in there someplace. Get that out of the way. Don't want to lose that thing either. Look at that. That thing is running good now. Okay, well you can see it runs now on all of them, so that's good. Alright, well thanks for uh, tuning in today. So we found probably why this was so cheap, as somebody had been trying to work on it. 
I don't know what we're going to get into when we get the transmission. But we've got it running now. It's running on all six. The distributor's in right. It's in time. We've got to get a new valve cover gasket and put on there. Button the top end of this up. And then we're going to move on to the transmission. We get this thing to where I it shifts and all that stuff back and forth. We're going to take it down and get a new exhaust system put it on so it's not so loud. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we got body to beat out on it. We got brakes to go through. We got just all kinds of stuff. So if you got any parts for these old Dodges, you know, I'm in search for some taillights and I need a dash pad. Obviously this one is destroyed. And um, I got my eye on a couple of doors. These are rusted out along the bottom. Somebody around not too far away that's trying to sell it. Hey, I'm trying to film here. This cold must be getting out. The wild drivers are going crazy. So anyway, got my line on a couple of doors. Hopefully I can get those soon. And uh, so we'll just keep pressing on. Thanks for watching. Be sure and share. Hit the like button. Comment. Send me a comment. Yeah, I want to talk with you. You can also send me an email. I ran my email address across here. Or maybe it will go this way. I don't know. You decide. Alright. Thanks for watching. Bye.